As the United States president hit the ground running blindfolded, or has he some foresight that evades others? Now to discuss this and other issues around the United States foreign policy, I'm now joined in the studio by Professor Malte Brosig. He is a senior lecturer in international relations at Wits University. Prof, uh, good afternoon. Thanks so much for your time. Now, some are saying uh, the U.S. president has hit uh, the ground running. So many executive, um, those, uh, the executive orders, and some saying is even shooting from the hip. What do you say about at least the number and the content of the executive orders that he has yeah, given so yeah. far? Um, thanks for having me. And um, obviously, I mean, he's, he's very active. So, yep. and I think uh, to to one extent, he might be uh, compensating for all the criticism that he gets <laughs> and the and the bad media, the press, and the broken relationships. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that actually uh, come up with Mexico, with the media, with the broader public in, in, in America, for, for, for example. Uh. So, but yeah, we, we, we still have to wait and see um, about the specific details, actually, that the administration. Yeah. Because he has to also replace a lot of people uh, within the larger administration, mm -hmm. and we don't have all details yet. But now, when you look at uh, the, let the latest executive order banning um, uh, the, um, the Muslims, uh, at least some Muslim countries, from uh, getting access to the United States, saying uh, that he mm -hmm. wants to make America safer, is that really really the way to go and will it work in any case in the end i mean i, I personally think it, it, it's highly problematic right yeah. uh, because um how can you say that you know muslims are the source of a security threat as such right mm -hmm. and we know that's not true i mean there are terrorist uh, groups and so on and um it's it, it's okay uh, to use intelligence and go after them but yep. uh, you cannot completely ban and, and uh, demonize uh, countries i mean this I mean, we, we had these discourses in the past of rogue states and so on, and I think that's, that was wrong, or failed states. Even that discourse is problematic mm -hmm. because it brands certain people, certain countries in, yeah. in a way which is not completely, not completely fair. So, but you see his style, so it's a very populist style. Mm. It's built on xenophobic um, sentiments in the population, right? So, and he seems to adamant and continuing on that, that way forward. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, now uh, just the uh, story we were watching, uh, uh, before speaking to you with the relations with Mexico and uh, uh, the wall on the border. Now, how will that uh, uh, play out in relations with uh, uh, not just Mexico, but uh, the broader Latin America? Yeah, I, th I think it also um, is important not only for Latin America, but also mm -hmm. for the idea of free trade, because NAFTA com comes in, for example. But I mean, the way um, the Trump uh, people are treating Mexico is, is not acceptable. It's very mm -hmm. undiplomatic. <laughs> we, we haven't seen this for, for, for a long time. I mean, uh, Mexico is not the enemy number one for the US, for the United States, mm -hmm. right? So this is again something um, that's very that's very concerning, and he's destroying, I think, uh, diplomatic relations at a very um, fast speed, right? Yeah. And you know, at some point, it's, it's very easy to destroy something, but to rebuild it late, later on, then takes a, takes a lot of time. And I can very much understand the Mexican yeah. reaction, saying that, well, of course, we are not paying for the war. But <laughs> the only country that uh, seems to be having, uh, let's call them warm relations with the current uh, U.S. administration is Russia. What is at mm -hmm. the core of uh, this mm -hmm. friendliness and will it always be like this or it may change in the yeah, I mean, coming let's weeks and um, if I, I think there's, if, if when a new administration comes in, there are also opportunities for change, right? And not all change is negative. Mm -hmm. I think the relationship between the U.S. and Russia actually reached a low point and they reached a point where you know, we were reminded of the Cold War, like where um, we have new um, 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 soldiers going to Eastern Europe, for example, and then Russia is uh, mm -hmm. responding to this. And, you know, I, I think Trump can, to, to say something positive here, <laughs> I think <laughs> Trump can actually maybe break this, um, this rather dangerous logic, right, and, and um, kind of press the reset button mm -hmm. with regard to Russia. Uh, but when you look now uh, uh, to Russia's neighbor, China, and they are, they are um, so particular about the one China policy, which Trump says he doesn't really accept. How do you see those relations uh, playing out, you know, the US-China uh, uh, relations? Yeah, I think my, my, my prediction would be also that reality kicks in at some point. Mm -hmm. um, because the two countries, I mean, they're major economic powers. 
there's no question about it. And the two countries are linked uh, to one another um, very strongly. If you see that the Chinese are buying U.S. bonds, for example, and thereby actually supporting the U.S. economy uh, in order for the Americans to buy Chinese products. Right, so if you then put up like high tariffs on Chinese products, <laughs> why should the Chinese then still continue buying bonds, for example, or invest yes. in, in America? So as President Xi actually said in, in, in Davos, you know, um, there can only be losers of a major trade war. And mm -hmm. I think that reality at some point also kicks in. But the rhetoric on the Trump side might be completely different. So yeah. I guess so we have to prepare ourselves for rhetoric on the one uh, mm -hmm. hand, uh, which is very populist, very America focused. And then on mm -hmm. the other side, also, you know, compromising and not being too tough. So the possibilities you are saying of a proper trade war between the US and China is kind of remote at, the, at this stage? I, w I would say it would be rather irrational. <laughs> 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 I would rather bet on a war of words maybe, yeah. but not so much on a full-blown um, you know, um, uh, trade war. Mm -hmm. Just think about, I mean, Apple products are very popular in China, sure. so um, obviously Americans mm -hmm. also want to export to China, and uh, it's a huge market. It's mm -hmm. larger than the, the than the U.S. economy and in, yeah. in, in in the future. So, you know, it's rather problematic to mm -hmm. just think about um, there will be an, uh, a trade war definitely. So now, just a few days ago, we saw the first uh, foreign leader uh, visiting uh, the Trump administration. That was Theresa May uh, from the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Is it still that special relationship or it was just a visit uh, to uh, seal, uh, you know, trade agreements? And how do you look at uh, uh, the future relations, not just with the United Kingdom, but with Europe? Yeah, I mean, um, Europe and the U.S. are meeting at a, at a very particular time in, in, in their own history. So obviously when May comes to, to Trump, um, mm -hmm. what the British have in mind is, of course, the Brexit and the future uh, uh, were outside the, outside the European Union. And then obviously there have been very strong historic relations uh, mm -hmm. between the U.S. and, and, the, and the United Kingdom. And the uh, U.K. definitely needs to look for other trade partners to kind of compensate for the, for the Brexit. Um, and um, obviously Trump is also happy that, you know, a major Western leader is actually coming and, you know, um, um, accepting him and introducing yeah. him into the international uh, uh, world. Well, Prof, we can talk all day about the U.S. administration, but unfortunately we have to end it here. And thanks so much for your time. That there is Professor Malte Brosik, Senior Lecturer in International Relations from Witz University here in Johannesburg. Now to uh, the other story now. Chilean President Michel Bachelet met with intelligence officials this week to discuss the progress of the investigation into the causes of historic wildfires.